Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 9.4 histograms. So our three learning targets for today, I can create a frequency table, I can make a histogram from a frequency table, and I can describe the distribution of a histogram. So we start with a few terms here. The first one is frequency, which is just how often something occurs. And in order to count the frequency, what we use is a frequency table, which is basically a tally chart. And it's used to count the frequency. Basically what happens is we will have a chart where it has intervals and we use the tally chart to count how many times something happens within that interval, how many data points are within that interval, and then when we count up the total number of tallies, we call that the frequency. All right, a histogram. So a histogram is very similar to a bar graph. The difference is a bar graph displays what we call qualitative data. So like colors or like things that are answer into like a category and how many times does it happen within the category. Where histograms are using what are called, or is based off what's called quantitative data. So you're going to have a, a, a list of numbers and then we're going to break them into intervals and stuff like that. So first we're going to say it's a display of the frequency chart. we need to know is that the bars are uniform width touching and that adjacent bars adjacent is a math term for next to so bars that are basically bars that are next to each other, so adjacent bars are shaded differently. So any two bars that are touching, that, that would be the our definition of adjacent. So those touching bars are shaded differently. That's the biggest thing that we need to remember as well. When we talk about distributions, there are five main distributions. The first one we call normal in which it's highest in the middle and lowest on the edges. If you were to take stats class you talk about normal curves and normal distributions and this is what's called a normal bell curve. But for what we are doing we are just going to call this a normal distribution. The next one is where you will have two distinct peaks on opposite sides which would mean it has two different modes, or what we call bimodal. If all of the bars are about the same, they not don't have to be exactly the same, but they're generally about the same, we call that a uniform distribution, when they're all within a couple. I mean, depending on what your ranges are, but uniform, it does happen. Our next one, these kind of are a pair. The first one here, whenever it's kind of like a normal curve but pushed off to one side, we call that skewed. So both of these last two are skewed. Now, when we talk about skewed, there's a, a direction because it's either kind of pushed way, way to the left or way to the right. So this one here that I've kind of traced in red, this is called skewed left. One way to think about it is if I were to take off these last couple bars here, and don't do this in your notes, but if I were to take those last couple bars, that would look fairly normal. So what we're doing is we are saying that that part on the left there, that tail, if you will, is, is skewing it. It's changing it from normal. So that would be skewed left. 
which then means this one on the far end here is skewed right. We have extra bars on the right side. It's stacked up on the left higher, and thus we have a tail going to the right. I remember them as being like pushed. So like this would be normal, but someone came and pushed it from the left side on this skewed left one, kind of pushed the top over and it kind of piled up, kind of like a snow pile does. Um, that's kind of how I remember. So take a moment, pause the video, and go through each of these. We will go through these in class as well. Um, but yeah, go through and identify each of these. All right. Uh, a survey asked people how many times a year they wash their vehicles. The results are shown below. So this would be an example of a frequency table. Where it says car washes here, that's also going to be called an interval, which the interval is always going to be x because the frequency is always going to be y. When we are making a histogram of the data, the first thing we need to do is we need to label our x and y axis. Now, using a ruler or something you can actually measure, the first thing you do is do our x axis. Our bars need to be the same with that means we need to actually measure out our width so that they are all going to be the same and whether you're doing uh, a full centimeter half an inch whatever you've got to work with um, our, again we need to label so in this case, it is washes. And then we are going to put our intervals here. So our first one was 0 to 19, 20 to 39. Now, if you can't write small enough or if you made it too small, you can always write at an angle like that. If you can write small enough that you can fit it horizontally, go for horizontally. But if you can't, you can always write it like a... I guess it'd be like a quarter angle going down. The y-axis, as we said, is always going to be labeled frequency. You can abbreviate frequency again with FREQ. And then same thing, we need to pick a scale that's going to show. Um, we're going to start at 0. We're going all the way up to 77. So I'm going to go by 10s. And so you need to come up with a scale to go by and then you need to label as well. So I went by tens all the way up to eighty. And now when you do these, we actually are going to start right along the x or sorry, along the y-axis here. Our first bar is 54. Now our scale here, and again, you're going to want to use a, a straight edge to draw these. And draw a bar that's 54. Again, starting on the y-axis, going over that whatever, if you want half inch, one centimeter, whatever and then using a straight edge to complete that. So you have nice straight sides. Now, if you have one where you're going like by ones or by twos, it's pretty straightforward what your bar represents. If you don't, it is customary to label the top of your bar. The next bar goes to 65. So from this top right corner, we're gonna go up to 65, and then we're gonna go over And again, using a straight edge, you're going to make that bar 65 high. The next bar goes to 77. So we're going to go up to 77. And again, using a straight edge. And then our last bar is 45. So we're going to come back down here to 45. And again, going from the edge so there's no gaps whatsoever 
And you can see here I didn't use a straight edge, so I got a little bit of a wobble in there. And that one was 45. Now, shading. You need to shade. If you have different colors, it's just a matter of using different colors. If you don't have different colors, it's using different patterns. So what you could do, and I'm just going to use black here to show different patterns, you could go horizontally in one. Which means then, this next bar, I can't go horizontally, but I could do vertical bars. I could do diagonals. So I went diagonal right. I could go diagonal left. I could make a hatch pattern if I wanted. I could just do some squiggles in there, like some back and forth S's. Basically, whatever so that adjacent bars are different. Could I go as simple as shaded, not shaded, shaded, not shaded? Yeah, you could do that. I uh, Describe the distribution. I would say that this is pretty normal. Our highest bars are in the middle. Our lowest bars are on the edge. So we would call this a normal distribution. C says, what is the probability that a person chosen at random washes their vehicle 40 or more times a year? Well, we know or means to add, so we're going to add these two together. So we take 77 plus 45 and we get 122 over, and then again, total numbers, so you're going to add all of these together and we get 241. The last question says, what are the odds in favor? Oh boy, here we go, odds again. So again, odds in favor was would be favorable to unfavorable. So it says, odds in favor of a per person surveyed, chosen at random, washes his or, car, his or her car 20 to 39 times. So favorable would be those that wash their car 20 to 39. Those that are not, so would be the ones that are outside of that. So we're going to take this and those two and add them together. Well, we know that 77 and 145 adds to be 122, so add 54 to that, and you get 176. Again, if it reduces, you reduce it, but in this case, it doesn't, so we're moving on. All right, so this one, we are going to make our own tally chart our own frequency chart here. So it says the birth weights in ounces of babies born in a hospital are listed below. Make a histogram of the data. So before we even get to it, first thing you do is count the number of data points. So we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. So n equals 13. And basically when we're doing this, I will always give you the intervals. Again, when you take a stats class, they will talk about how you can make the intervals and comprise them and all that good stuff. I will give you the intervals. You just have to complete the chart. So 96 goes in the first row, or the first interval, 128, 115. And so you're just going to go through, and then some people like to cross them off when they're done. Go through all of the data points. So go ahead and pause the video and complete this. When you're done with all your tallies, you count the total number of tallies, and that is your frequency. Again, so you should have gotten one for the first interval, two for the second, five for the third interval, four for the fourth, and one for the last interval. As we said before, frequency... In this case, we're only going to be going to 5, so when you do your y-axis, you're only going to go by 1s, and so you don't have to worry about labeling the top of the bars. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You may want to go half inch, centimeter, whatever, but then our label down here will be birth weight which is in ounces. So what I'd like you to do, draw out your x-axis. Again, all of the bars need to be the same width, so use your ruler straight edge to make them all the same. Go ahead and draw all your bars, the one, two, five, four, one. Do the shading and check back when you've finished. All right, so we can see here 
we have all our bars, they're all touching, they're all the same width. We have them all shaded differently. Um, if you were asked to describe this distribution, I would say that this is fairly normal. The lowest bars are on the very edges, the highest bars are in the middle. So I would say that this is normal, even though this question doesn't ask for it. All right, we will do a few of these in class. Um, but what I do want to finish with is talking about interpreting a, a histogram. So they give you a histogram, and now we need to interpret it. So this first one here, describe the distribution. I would say all of the highest bars on this one are on the one end, on the very right side. So I would call this one skewed left. How many students are in this class? What you're going to do is you're just going to go find the height of each bar. So like this one's 3, 5, there's nothing here. Then we got 12, 8, and 2, and add up all those numbers, and we find that there are 30. In this case, we're talking about students, right? So 30 students. What percent scored better? So again, what percent is, we need to figure out the probability first. So we got 10 out of the 30, and then convert that to a percentage. So take 10 divided by 30 is 0.333 times 100. We get 33.3%. In which interval is the median score? So we know there are 30. So again, we talk about the median is going to be between the 15th and 16th. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to count from the bottom and go, okay, we're at 3 plus 5 is 8. So that means this bar has data terms 4 through 8. That means this bar has the next 12, which would be 9 through 20. This one has 21 to 28, and this one has 29 to 30. Well, the 15 and 16 are both in this interval, so that would be our answer, 71 to 80%. So we're just looking in which interval. We're not asking what is the median, in which interval. So which bar has the median in it? We're doing the same thing on this one. We're talking probability and odds again. But I'd like you to pause the video and try each of these on your own. All right, so yes, I would say that this is a normal distribution. You count up the number of students, you should get 16. So you do 16 over 2, and you get 8. Let's try that again. So you know there are 8 students on each side, so you count 2 through 6. So that middle bar, that 180 to 189, will have your median in it somewhere. Probability is shorter so that would be less than 180 so it's these two bars here on the left that's what we're talking about those two bars so there are six students out of the 16 total and reduce the fraction odds against a student randomly or being taller than 190 so we have five that are taller again against means they go second so five that are taller 11 that are shorter if you have questions on anything we cover in the video, make sure you come to class ready to ask. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.